Good morning, Beaumont Church of Christ. We are here to uh, continue our Bible study. We'll get ready for our Wednesday night Bible study. As you know, we are doing a series out of 1 Samuel, and we are discussing leadership. Uh, we are not discussing leadership as far as qualifications and uh, according to uh, Titus and according to First Timothy, but we're just looking at qualities of leaders and we're examining and we're looking at uh, Saul and comparing Saul's leadership to David's leadership. And today uh, we will continue. We're in First Samuel. Um, Today we'll be in 1 Samuel chapter, uh, we'll start at, at chapter 14. Uh, up to this point, you remember we've gone through and we opened up, we're talking about those who are not fit to lead. And uh, we looked at three. the first three points where uh, those who are not fit to lead have a worthless mindset. We took that from 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 21. And then we looked at uh, those who are not fit to lead they avoid their calling, according to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 22. And then uh, last week, lastly, we looked at those who are not fit to lead. They move by emotions at the expense of following God's word, 1 Samuel 13, verses 11 through 14. But today, uh, as we continue our study, uh, we will spend time in 1 Samuel chapter 4, chapter 14, Verse 45, and this is another uh, wonderful piece uh, that we'll talk about today. Uh, first thing, as we're looking at this, in First uh, Samuel chapter 14, verse 45, uh, what we want to talk about, those who are not fit to lead, uh, and this is something that we see often in the church or even in just society, uh, those who are not fit to lead, they have the title, but they don't have the influence. Now, when you talk about leadership, we understand leadership is, is only influence. A person can not have an official title and yet be a leader because they have the influence. I've been around churches long enough to know that sometimes some of the most influential people in the church are women. And they can't even hold the office. Uh, as an official leader, but they are a leader because they have more influence than sometimes those who are even in office. Um, influence, those who are, have the most influence, those who are influential people. Uh, so uh, here in, let's look at this here, in chapter 14. Now let's lay the, back, the background here. In chapter 14 of this text, we, we, we see how um, Jonathan had snuck out and uh, the, the, and uh, the uh, children of Israel and, and Saul, and they had come to battle. And, um, and when they had come to battle against the Philistines, and um, so Jonathan, uh, Jonathan uh, took a brave act. And uh, Jonathan, verse number six, um, and verse, let's just, let's, let's, uh, yeah, verse number six, uh, it says, then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, come, let us go over to the, ga the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord for, from saving by many or by few. Boy, that's some, some stuff right there. Look at Jonathan's heart, Jonathan's mind. Jonathan, Jonathan, he's, his mindset was that, hey, if the Lord is going to save us, the Lord has the ability to save us if it's by a whole lot of people or if it's just by a few people. So Jonathan had made up in his mind uh, that, that I, we're going to we're going to go over here uh, to fight these Philistines and we're going to go among them. Even if it's just a few of us, God has the ability to save. Boy, that's some good stuff, uh, and, and, and I think we ought to understand, and I think that's to note here, that God doesn't need a whole lot of folk. God doesn't need a whole lot of folk to get what he need done. Um, you plus God is a majority at all times. All right? Now, so it says, so his armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. Go then, here I am with you according to your heart. Then Jonathan said, very well, let us cross over to these men. 
and we will show ourselves to them. If they say thus to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if they, uh, they say thus, come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has delivered them into our hands, and this will be, be a sign to us. See, even though, even though Jonathan was going across and he was going... Uh, understanding that that God didn't need a whole lot of folk, uh, but what he did understand was what we're going to do is we're going to be wise in this thing. We're going to show ourselves, and when we show ourselves, and then we're going to wait on the sign from God. If 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 they if they say let us come to you, then we know no, uh, God hadn't delivered us. But if they say let us, if they say you come up to us, then God has delivered them into our hands, and so. In verse number, verse number um, 11, so both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines. And Philistines said, look, the, the Hebrews are coming out of the, of the holes where they are, hi are hiding. Then the men of the garrison called to Jonathan and his armor, armor bearer and said, come up to us and we will show you something. Jonathan, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come up, uh, come up after me. For the Lord has delivered them into the hands of Israel. Uh, and Jonathan climbed up, climbed up on his hands and knees, went with his armor bearer after him, and they fell before Jonathan. And he and he came after him, his armor bearer, bearer killed them. All right, so God delivered. I'm gonna skip down through this a little bit so we can for the sake of time. So God is delivering the Philistines into the hand of Jonathan. Now, and then uh, let's keep let's keep going. Let, let's keep, let's keep, let's keep keep going and, and and working through this thing. And then and then Jonathan said, then John then then the Bible says that that the slaughter which Jonathan and armor bearer made was about twenty men, which about half of an acre of land. All right, now I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go down to uh, verse number because I want to keep moving. All right, now in verse number nineteen, it says, "Now it happened when while Saul talked to the priest that the noise, uh, which was in the camp of the Philistines, continued to increase. So Saul said to the priest, "Withdraw your your hand." Then Saul and all the people who were with him assembled and they went to battle and indeed every man sword was against his neighbor and there was a great there was great confusion more were the hebrews who were with the philistines before that time who went up with them into the camp for the surrounding country they also joined the israelites who were with saul and jonathan Likewise, all the men of Israel who were who had hidden in the mountains of the Ephraims, when they had heard that the Philistines fleed, they also followed hard after after them in battle. So, so the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle shifted to Beth Beth, Beth Abel, and the men of Israel were distressed that that day. For Saul had placed the people under an oath, saying, Curse is the man who eat any food until the evening before I have taken vengeance of my enemies. So none of the, me, the people tasted food. Now, this is some foolishness here. This, now, Saul made this, made this oath with the people. Now, if you're going to battle, then you're going to need food. You're going to need nutri nutrients to be able to sustain yourself. All right, but the men, the men that had taken this oath, so now they was weary and they was tired because they hadn't eaten anything. Okay, now, now watch this. The Bible says, now all the people of the land came to the forest, and there there was honey on the ground. And when the people had had come into the woods, there was the honey dripping. Can you see this, y'all? They hungry. They ain't eat. They ain't eat all day, all right? And then they come, and here's honey sitting right here. All right, but no man would put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. 
They didn't eat because Saul had told them not to eat. All right, watch this now. But Jonathan had not heard his father's charge to the people with the oath. Therefore, he stretched out at the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in the honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his countenance brightened. See, once Jonathan, Jonathan got some honey and all of a sudden Jonathan began, Jonathan began to feel better because he's, he's eating. But he didn't know that his father had made this foolish oath. Okay? And then one of the people said, your father strictly charged the people who with an oath saying, cursed is the man who eat from this day. And the people were, and the people were faint. But Jonathan said, my father has troubled the land. Look now how my countenance has brightened because I tasted a little of this honey. Jonathan uh, uh, saw his son even realized that that oath was foolish and look at it. Uh, my countenance is better because I have eaten. All right. So, so, so look at this. Look at this. Uh, so, so Jonathan says, I understand what my dad said, but this doesn't make, this does not make any good sense at all. But anyway, so that's, so that's the, the backdrop. Okay. That's the backdrop of what's going on. So, so first of all, First of all, Jonathan goes out to battle, uh, just him and his armor band. They take a risk for the Lord, knowing that the, and understand that the Lord can save, be it, be, be it be few or be it many. And then they followed the, they followed the uh, sign that the Lord gave them, and they went out in the battle. And they went and they began to overtake the Philistines. All right, now remember, Saul had made this oath. Nobody's supposed to eat. All right, so all the men was tired. Jonathan didn't hear that they weren't supposed to eat, so Jonathan took some of the some of the honeycomb. So the curse was that any any man that any man that would eat any food, all right, then that person would be put to, that person will be put to death. Okay, all right. Now let's let's fast forward a little bit to, so we can get get to all of this. So we can get a good see what happened. All right, now, all right, now. All right, verse 33, let's come down to verse, 30, verse 33. Then they told, told Saul, saying, Look, the people are sinning against the Lord by eating with the, eating with the blood. So he said, You have dealt treacherously. Roll a large stone, stone to me this day. Then Saul, Saul said, Dis, Disperse yourselves among the people and say to them, Bring me here every man's ox and every man's sheep slaughter there here and eat and do not sin against the Lord by eating with the blood. So every one of the people brought his ox with him the night and slaughtered it there. Then Saul built an altar to the Lord. The first, this was the first altar that he built to the Lord. Now Saul, now Saul said, let us go down after the Philistines by night and plunder them until the morning light. And it, and it and and let us not leave a man there. And they said, "Do whatever seems good to you." Then the priest said, "Let us draw near to God here." So Saul asked, uh, "Asked counsel of God, shall I shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands, or Israel?" But he did not answer him him that day. And Saul came. Saul said, come over here, all you chief of the people, and know and see what this, what this sin was today. For as the Lord lives, who, who saves Israel, though it be in Jonathan, my son, he shall surely die. But not a man among all the people answered him. So look, so they was, Saul was trying to figure out why God wasn't wasn't answering him about whether to go out to bat, go out to battle, okay? And 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 knowing that what Jonathan had done, some of the men knew what Jonathan had done, and then uh, so when Saul began to question and ask questions, nobody would say anything, okay? All right, in verse forty, then he said to all the Israel, "You be on you be on one side, and my son Jonathan." And I will be on the other side. And the people said to Saul, do what seems good to you. Therefore, Saul 
said to the Lord, God of Israel, give a perfect lot. So Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. All right, and Saul said, cast lots between myself, my son Jonathan and me. So Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, tell me what you had done. So in order to find out, okay, what was going on, they cast lots. All right, and then when they cast a lot, the lot fell on Jonathan. All right, and then by the lot falling on Jonathan, then Saul knew it was Jonathan that had that had did something, and so and so this when Saul asked Jonathan, "What have you done?" And then in verse forty three, it says, "And Jonathan told him and saying, I only tasted a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand, so now I must die." So Jonathan understood what the oath was. Now and look at the look at the the heart of Jonathan. And uh, Jonathan being able and, and being willing to uh, be held accountable for what he had done. Didn't try, to, didn't try to find no no way out. He just said, then I must die because I did not follow the oath. And so watch Saul. Saul answered, God do so and more also, for you shall surely, you shall surely die, Jonathan. Die, Jonathan. But, but now here is where I want us to get, been trying to get to, where I want us to understand you have the title. Uh, men that are not fit to lead may have a title, but they don't have the influence. Watch this in verse number 45. Watch the people. It says, but the people said to Saul, shall Jonathan die who has accomplished this great deliverance in Israel? All right, certainly not. As the Lord liveth, not one hair of his head shall fall to the ground, for he has he has worked with God this day. So the pe people rescued Jonathan, and he did not die. Look, y'all, uh, Saul had the title, all right, and Saul had made a, a cree, the cree. Saul had made an oath, okay, but. When it came down to it, all right, even though he was the king, all right, even though he had the title, but he didn't have the influence, all right, the people stood up, stood up and said, no, no, this is not going to happen. You, you, uh, Jonathan is not going to surely die, all right? Not a hair going to be touched on his head. I don't care if you are the king, this is not going to die. He's not going to die. So where, the question on the floor is, where was the influence? Well, when you look at it, the influence among the people was not with Saul. The influence among the people was with Jonathan. Why? Because of what Jonathan did. Now, let me let me let me say this real fast. All right, you don't you don't get influenced by just sitting around and doing nothing. You get influenced by decisions that you make. You get influenced by the work that you do. The Bible the Bible says 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 uh when it talks about when it talks about an elder uh, it talks about you ought to esteem them highly not just because they're an elder but esteem them highly for their work's sake all right so you build influence among people and among those who you lead by the way you work among them so your work should speak for you see jonathan's work sp spoke for him jonathan's coverage spoke for him jonathan willing to listen to god spoke for him Jonathan had, then had actions that, that spoke for him. So even though Saul had the title as the king, but Saul didn't have the influence. Uh, influence was with Jonathan, Saul's son, because of what he had did. All right? So, so, so as I close this lesson, this Bible class lesson, all right, it, it's, it's critical to understand whenever we're all, whenever you're looking uh, at people that are in leadership, whenever you're looking at guys that are desiring to be leaders, all right, first of all, before you get a title, you got to get influence. You got to be able to influence people. You got to have, have, people got to be able to see that you're worthy of the title or you will get in an office or, or you will have a title, but you won't have no influence. And those who are not fit to lead, 
uh, you get a lot of folk that get into an office. And watch this. This is going to be real critical, y'all, that I want us to understand. Some folk may meet all of the biblical qualifications to be, to be placed in the office, okay? But they don't have the leadership quality, the, the qualities to really lead. And so what ends up happening is they're in there with the title. They got all the qualifications, but yet and still, when it comes down to it, they don't have what it takes, and they're not fit to be a leader. And when you're not fit to be a leader, you're in there with a title, but you don't have influence. And then the people start looking at you strange, and the people will, the people will hear you, but they won't listen to you. They will hear what you're saying, but they won't listen. And so what ends up happening is then you're out, then instead of you being a leader of people, you're only a leader of yourself. All right, have a great rest of the day, and we'll continue next week uh, with this study in 1 Samuel. God bless you. Take care.